the new Emacs RS2205S, 2300 kV. Is it a good motor? Is it worth your time? Is it worth the upgrade? What are the differences from the old ones? And what kind of power does it output? And at what cost of amps? Let's find out. Alright, here we are in a little bit closer with the motor, so let's just take a quick look. So you can see they have the, let me take the prop nut off. They have a new design up top. You can see they have this cool little design. Looks different. Um, nice that they made some uh, visual differences. We have a new shaft. This is now a hollow shaft. As you can see there, it's hollow. And it is hardened steel. So it is definitely going to be a lot stronger than the previous shafts. However, I never had any problems with breaking them. On the bottom, you can see we now have a set screw right there. So it does not use the e-clip that people complained about or popping off and replacing. Um, so now it has a set screw, so that's really nice. If we look in here, we have a little bit of shorter wires, but hopefully you can see they have the very large magnets once again. However, now they are using arc magnets, which means the magnets, instead of being flat like this, laid out against the stator, um, kind of like in a design like that, you can only get so close and you want the air gap, the distance between the stator and the magnet, to be as close as possible for maximum power. So now the arc magnets are basically curved magnets. Hopefully you can see they have a little bit of a curvature to them which allows them to get even closer to the stator. And if you look there, the air gap on these is just crazy. I cannot see any air or any light through them. I can't even find the gap. That's crazy. So hopefully that'll help the numbers out quite a bit on this. You can see this blue um, gunk here is some balancing from the factory. And spinning it in my hands, let me hear, listen to it. The um, bearings sound very smooth and it has it's a nice strong tactile feel to the magnets. They feel nice and strong just by turning it. Um, nice little steps here. So yeah, let's take a look at one of the old motors from Emacs. This is their old edition. So hopefully you can also see that they have um, decrease the weight a little by making the overall profile a little bit slimmer. Hopefully you can see that there. A little bit slimmer up top. Basically, um, just the bell housing is slimmer. Um, you can see they still have the cooling fins. Uh, but yeah, you can see the old E-clip on these, as well as the flat magnets. Hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference right there. So let's get a weight on these motors because that's some of the a lot of the things they did were for weight purposes. Um, so this old motor it does not it has the uh, motor wires cut so it'll be a little bit lighter and that's coming at 28.88 so 28.9 grams so not too bad and this new motor with the wires is coming at 29.7 so it's pretty much the same weight I mean the wires are a little bit longer on here, but it has the hardened steel shaft, so that's going to weigh a little bit more. And the prop nut, they also changed. This now comes with, a, I'm pretty sure it's an aluminum lock nut, but it only comes with one, so that's a little disappointing. And you also get um, two sets of screws. Let me try and line them up. One is longer and one is shorter, hopefully, as you can see there. The longer ones are for four millimeter thick arms and the shorter ones are for three millimeter thick and they only give you one prop nut instead of three so that's kind of disappointing um, they used to give you three in all their older motors which I was really a fan of um, you also get the allen key they continued that trend however they changed a little bit this is now an M2 I believe it's M2 allen key it's the one size down they used to use the larger ones for the older motors this is the same size that almost all frame screws use um, it's not the real thick one that these Emacs motors used, a couple other motors used. So it's, it's kind of, that's good. Now you only need one key for all the parts on your frame, well, depending on what other stuff you have. However, it's a little bit of a smaller tip up here. You can see they have the rounded design as well as the flat head on this side. But it's going to be a little bit easier to strip this way. However, I've never really had a problem. And, you know, they give one of these in every motor so you have four different ones to try if you strip them out so yeah the this motor feels really solid there's no play in it right in my hand um, it feels really solid in my hands and I really like the design and what they've done to change it so now let's put it on the thrust stand and see what kind of numbers this puts out on some lighter um, lighter props like an HQ5040 try and some heavier props like a DAL T5040 V2 bullnose so let's get to that alright so here we are so I will just quickly go over everything um, for the tools here and how we'll be testing. So for the thrust and amp meter, as well as watts and volts, this is the Turnigy V2 thrust stand. So it combines the thrust with all the amp readings. 
Um, the motor obviously is the red bottom that we just looked at. I and mean, I've just got it mounted up here. I have it mounted in the pusher configuration, so the motor will be turning, uh, should be turning this way. So we should, we get still full thrust because this can measure pull and push, uh, but it keeps the wind blowing the other way. Um, so it doesn't completely screw up the audio on the camera here. And that's just connected to a DYS XS30 amp. Just got some tape to make sure it doesn't short against here. Um, just plugged in here and this um, battery just supplies 5 volts to the machine. And then for power, I have two Turnigy Graphene 4S 1365C batteries here. And I run these in parallel to here so we get max peak numbers with little or less sag. For the props, I've got the HQ. I'll also be testing the DAL uh, 5045 Bullnose V2 two-bladed edition, the two-blade prop. That same prop, but in a tri-blade, so a nice and heavy prop should be interesting on this lower KV 2300. And then the DAL Q5040, so a quad-blade prop. So we'll see how those perform. So let's get into it. All right, here we are on the HQ5040 tri-blade, so we should be good to go. So let's hold it down here. Okay, so on the HQ5040 tri-blade, we got 1,228 grams of thrust, which is very respectable for a 2300 kV motor that is very high. Um, we got 29.73 amps, so a little bit higher than the previous versions, which were 28 amps, but that is very good in consideration to the thrust increase, I think. We got 482.5 watts with an efficiency of 2.55 grams per watt. Here we are on the DAL T5045 V2 Bullnose, the tri-blade edition. So another tri-blade, but quite a bit heavier and more pitch than the HQ. Okay, so here are the results of the DAL T5045 tri-blade, which is quite a bit heavier of a prop than the HQ. So we got 1,290 grams of thrust, so just a little bit more. Um, we got 32.53 amps, so I'm not sure if the extra thrust is worth those extra 2.5 amps. Um, but then we got 524 gram, or watts there with an efficiency a little bit lower than the HQ at 2.46 grams per watt. Okay, here we are with the two-bladed DAL prop, the 5045 Bullnose V2. Let's try this. So here are the results of the DAL 5045 Bullnose V2 prop, the dual-bladed, so two-blade prop. We got 1,136 grams of thrust, 26.59 amps, 431.5 watts. Um, if you look at the meter, it says 288 there, but it took another just a half split second for the watts to update, so I got that number from there. Was, uh, that brings us to a higher efficiency than the other props at 2.63 grams per watt. So less thrust, but it is a lot more efficient at only 26.5 amps. Okay, here we are with the DAL Q5040, so the quad blade prop. Okay, these are the results for the DAL Q5040 quad blade. We had 1,287 grams of thrust, 32.49 amps, 517.8 watts, with an efficiency of 2.49 grams per watt. Alright, so here we are. So let's sum up the results that we just got after testing this motor on these four different props. So on the HQ, we got over, uh, I believe it was about 1,250 grams of thrust, which is a lot more. I've been only getting about 1,100 on the old Emacs, and we only got about 29.7 amps. So it is quite a bit more thrust. We do have about one to two more amps, so a little bit more amps, but I think they have made a very good improvement in the, fr in the thrust on this propeller. Um, for not many more amps, so I'm very happy with that. On the DAL, we saw similarly, however, this didn't actually get very much thrust at all, extra thrust, compared to this HQ here. So, it can drive the heavier propeller, it's got tons of torque, but we didn't see like on some of the other motors where this goes a lot higher with just a ton more amps. This got about, um, I believe, 32 amps. Maybe 30, I don't remember. <laughs> it was in the video there. So I still definitely like the HQ more. Um, on the DAL, we didn't get nearly as much thrust, only 1,136 grams, but 26 amps with a higher efficiency. If you were going for all-out speed, maybe this prop and the 2,600 kV um, version of this motor. I know Ferrati um, really likes them, and that's his go-to motor from Emacs, or his go-to motor in general. He really likes that. You can get a ton of speed. 
Um, and then for the DAL Q5040, uh, just peaking over 1300, but settled down at about 1280 grams. Um, once again, at about 32 amps. So pretty good overall. Um, good thrust improvements for not too many more amps. Um, I will be rocking the HQ. It seemed like the sweet spot for this motor, um, this specific motor, and I just really love that prop. Um, but yeah. Um, it's not as powerful as some of the motors like these um, ones I'm running right now on my Mini Quad Club Fusion. These are the Sunny Sky uh, Edge R2205 2480 kV, so higher kV by about 200. And kV is the RPM per volt applied, so you're going to get faster RPMs, which equates to more thrust. But when you're using kV to get more thrust, you are going to be pulling a lot more amps. And this motor on this prop, the same exact test, I pulled 35, 36 amps with this, and this is a very light, efficient prop. So, and I got 1350 grams of thrust. So, insane thrust on this motor, however, at 37 amps. So, just 100 grams, 120 grams lower on this motor, and we got 29 amps, or yeah, so six amps um, lower. So, I would much rather take this combo over these two because you're going to get be getting way more efficiency out of this, and you go a lot easier on your batteries. And as well as the similarly motors, um, up one or two amps from the old readings. However, um, on 100 to 150 more grams of thrust throughout the propellers that I've been getting. I just wanted to take a second to insert this little clip here because I forgot to mention it in the video. All the numbers, the thrust, and the amps are a peak number. is the absolute max you're going to be able to get. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Um, it'll be a little lower, um, your amps will be lower in flight because it'll be in a dynamic in environment. The prop will be able to unload a lot easier than in the static environment. Um, but it does give us a, a way to compare motors and props um, because you can compare all the results to each other. Just know that you're not going to be getting these exact values in flight. So yeah, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. So overall, I'm really excited about this motor. It's got tons of torque to drive all these propellers up to this heavier quad blade this heavier tri as well as down to some lighter tri blades on um, the 2300 kV is very versatile and pretty much will take any uh, prop you can slap on it I mean I just really like this motor I'm really happy at the results from the bench test here so now I can't wait to get this on the build this is from provided from FPV model part of the ZMR 210R kit I'll leave a link down below I'll be checking out um, that kit as well as doing some builds on this so hopefully I'll have this flying on a copter within the week so yeah, that was the end of the video. Hope you liked it. I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon if you wish to help support the channel and you enjoy what I do. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.